Navigating fame as a celebrity involved in a same-sex relationship of any capacity in past eras was far from easy. The encroaching fear of exposure hung over entertainers like an ever-present cloud, leaving them vulnerable to public scrutiny. Left with no choice, many stars concealed their authentic selves throughout their careers, and their true identities were shrouded in mystery. Here are a few celebs who maintained secrecy in their romantic lives. Dan Hartman is most famous for his hit I Can Dream About You, which would appear on his album as well as the Streets of Fire soundtrack. In the film, the song is lip-synced by four black men. In the music video, Hartman appears as a bartender flirting with a woman. Allegedly troubled about being pigeonholed as a black artist, he took a different approach on his next album, opting for a more rugged quality and naming it White Boy. Much to his surprise, the label, MCA, was dissatisfied with the LP's lack of obvious hits and refused to release it. Although Hartman was very adamant about conveying his racial identity, he wasn't as forthcoming about his sexual orientation. He was diagnosed with HIV sometime in the 80s and kept it discreet even after his good friend Holly Johnson, formerly of Frankie Goes to Hollywood, revealed his own diagnosis. Hartman reportedly did not seek treatment and died from an AIDS-related brain tumor in 1994 at the age of 43, with few people knowing that he was gay and in poor health. Remembered for bringing George Jefferson to our television sets, Sherman Hemsley passed away in 2012 of lung cancer when he was 74. Behind the scenes, he never officially confirmed his partners of interest. Therefore, rumors circulated about his possible attraction to men. After his death, several celebrity friends publicly acknowledged that he was closeted. During a recent interview, fellow actor and longtime pal Garrett Morris, who made numerous guest appearances on The Jeffersons, asserted that he knew long before the public began speculating. You mentioned being black and being gay and being leftist was not a good combo. There, there, there were long-standing rumors that Sherman, you know, he, he was in the closet for the, for the better part of his life. Yes, he was. Is this something that was commonly known amongst you guys, or, or did you just find out in the aftermath? I knew about it, I knew about it a long time before it came out, yes. Really? Yeah, I did. For 11 seasons, the series explored a multitude of topics, including discrimination, racism, interracial marriage, and issues persistent to the LGBTQ community. In a fourth season episode titled Once a Friend, George is shocked when he learns that an old Navy buddy has undergone gender reassignment surgery and is now a stunning woman instead of the man he knew from their military years. George, I'm a woman now. I'm not Eddie anymore, I'm Edie. For the first time in my life, I, I'm really happy. Yeah, I'm thrilled too. It took me all this time to get up the courage to call you. My old buddy. Esteemed TV producer and game show host Merv Griffin refrained from validating or denying his sexual preference, especially during his illustrious tenure in the industry. In spite of his silence, a variety of events and accounts strongly indicate that he lived a reserved lifestyle. Two men filed separate lawsuits alleging passionate relationships with Griffin, but these claims were ultimately dismissed in court. Afterwards, he outwardly expressed that both instances were attempts to extort him for money. Being married to comedian Jewel Ann Wright and later linked with actress Ava Gabor were often viewed as cover-ups used to deflect speculation and gossip. Within Hollywood circles, Griffin's romantic attractions to the same sex were known but considered an open secret as legal restrictions and societal norms of the time prevented such discussions. Colleagues and acquaintances believed that his concealment was molded by his Catholic upbringing, political views, and the prevalent internalized homophobia of his generation. Following his death in 2007, The Hollywood Reporter published an article affirming that Merv Griffin lived a private life as a gay man. Known for her outspoken nature on the hit sitcom Gimme a Break, Nell Carter candidly discussed personal matters in interviews, including medical problems, drug addiction, and suicide. But on the other hand, there was a more indirect subject that she kept confidential. It wasn't until her passing that fans became aware of her longtime relationship with a woman named Ann Kayser. At first, Nell was married to George Kreinecke, who separated from her after just 18 months because of her escalating drug and alcohol use. Their union lasted 10 years before they finally divorced in 1992. Following a number of miscarriages, she adopted two infant boys, Joshua and Daniel, who were just seven weeks apart. 
Subsequently, Nell tied the knot for a second time with Canadian record producer Roger LaRoque, but their marriage ended within a year. When she died in 2003, Anne became the heir and custodial parent of her teenaged boys, a role previously unknown to her wider audience. Family and friends were startled to learn that Anne had been living with Nell in her Beverly Hills home for quite some time. Pioneering comedic great Richard Pryor's inner circle has garnered interest as more details emerge from those closest to him. His widow, Jennifer Lee, has often addressed rumors about his connection with Marlon Brando, stating it wasn't an affair, but rather a dalliance similar to other encounters he had with men. She clarified that while Pryor had such dalliances, he primarily preferred relationships with women. Richard often incorporated jokes about explicit interactions with men in his stand-up routines, which many perceived as just humorous anecdotes, and in his 1995 autobiography, he discussed an intimate involvement with a transgender woman. Despite being married seven times to five different women, two of whom he married twice, Pryor continuously found it difficult to sustain monogamous relationships. He passed away in 2005 of a heart attack while suffering from multiple sclerosis. Phyllis Hyman created music that remains unparalleled, standing the test of over four decades destined to remain timeless. She was married once to musician Larry Alexander, who served as her manager until they divorced in 1982. On June 30, 1995, she died by suicide, overdosing on pills in the bedroom of her New York City apartment. She was found unconscious hours before she was scheduled to perform at the Apollo Theater. In 2007, a biography authorized by her estate was released shedding light on Phyllis's past relationships with both men and at least one woman. She was just 45 years old when she died after enduring a prolonged battle with bipolar disorder and severe depression, conditions that were exacerbated by emotional hardships. The predominant assumption among the public was that her relationships were exclusively with men, a perception largely influenced by her well-known heterosexual marriage that affected her deeply. Paul Winfield helped open television to more black performers with his role on the TV series Julia. His portrayal of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the 1978 miniseries King was just as compelling. Further showcasing his versatility, he is also recognized for his characters in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, The Terminator, L.A. Law, 227, and his iconic voiceover work on the A&E True Crime series City Confidential. Beyond his professional achievements, Winfield was openly gay in his personal life, but exercised caution managing his career, considering the discrimination against being gay at that time. His partner of 30 years, architect Charles Gillen Jr., passed away in 2002. Winfield suffered a fatal heart attack in 2004 at the age of 64. While the entertainment industry has come a long way in terms of LGBTQ representation, the stories of these celebrities remind us of the struggles in earlier years. Beyond the artistry and talent they generously shared with audiences, their journeys also illuminate the unique adversities confronted by those who dared to live true to themselves in a less accepting era. Thanks for watching.